All right, DaVinci Resolve 20 is finally here. No more beta version, the full release is finally available. And today we're gonna take a look at 10 awesome new features. Some of these are minor updates that still make a big difference. Others are amazing time savers. And the last one on the list is even a little bit creepy if I'm being honest. So let's get into it. All right, this first new feature in DaVinci Resolve 20 is going to make life easier for when you're editing vertical videos, which in this day and age is pretty much anyone, right? You can go to this little drop down menu in the top right corner of your preview screen. Here you can change the normal 16 by 9 timeline to a 9 by 16 vertical timeline. DaVinci will now switch to a UI layout specifically for editing vertical videos. So you can have the media pool here on the left, the effects library in the middle, and still have a full width timeline at the bottom. Underneath the preview window, you'll also find this new button right here. This will give us a full screen preview of our vertical video, which is really nice to be able to see everything much better. Even if you then open the inspector, DaVinci will arrange all the screens really nicely. You also have this vertical UI on the cut page if you would need it there. And also on the color page, there is a new vertical UI. It does kind of shuffle things around. So we've got our nodes on the left here instead of on the right, but it will definitely make grading vertical videos a whole lot easier. So a really nice update. Next up, the AI Music Editor. This is a feature that a lot of people have been asking for, especially because Premiere Pro already had something similar. So here's a common situation. You've got a music track that you really like, but it's too long for your project. Maybe your video is only 15 or 30 seconds long, or you just want to use the song for a short intro. Well, the new AI Music Editor makes it super easy to change the length of the song. It automatically cuts and rearranges the music so everything still sounds smooth. You don't need to find the perfect cut points yourself or mess around with fade ins and fade outs. So I really think this can save you a lot of time. Here's how it works. First, select the music track you want to use on your timeline. Then open the inspector, go down to the AI music editor section. There are two ways to use this tool. The first way is to type in the exact length you want. Resolve will analyze the song and then retime it. And it's not speeding it up or slowing it down, but instead it cuts or loops the sections to make it fit the new length. The second method, and honestly the one I think I'll use the most, is by using Live Trim. Just make sure the Live Trim checkbox is turned on. Then you can adjust the song's length right in the timeline using the regular trim tools. Every time you change the length, DaVinci will automatically re-edit the music for you. And it actually does a really, really good job. Let's just have a listen here and see if you can hear the cut. You'll see these little jagged lines on the clip and that will show you where edits or cuts were made. And one more thing, DaVinci even gives you four different versions to choose from, so you can pick the one that sounds best for your project. Then if you're really happy with the result and you want to lock it in, just right click on the music clip and choose decompose in place. Then select use clips only. That will give you the original music track on the timeline with all the cuts baked in. Now this will work best with music that has a beat. So if you're gonna try this on, for example, some ambient music, it might not work that well. Number three, beat detection. This is a separate new feature, but it's closely related to the AI music editor. Right click on the music clip and go to show music beats. Resolve will analyze the track and then display beat markers on the clip. And these beat markers actually act as snapping points. So just make sure you have snapping enabled by hitting the shortcut N or by clicking this magnet icon right here. Now when you're editing your video, you can snap your clips right to the beat of the music or even make cuts that land perfectly on a specific beat. Obviously, you don't always wanna cut exactly on the beat of the music, but for those projects where you do need to do that, it's now going to be a hell of a lot easier. Just keep in mind that this feature will probably also work best with more beat-driven music. Next, copy-paste attributes. So obviously copying and pasting attributes isn't new, but in DaVinci Resolve 20, they changed a minor detail that I think makes a huge difference. So in this clip right here, I've got a few transforms on it, and I've also got a crop and then also a lens blur effect. 
In DaVinci 19, if I would hit Control C to copy and then click on another clip in the timeline and hit Alt or Option V to paste attributes or right click and select paste attributes, you would get this screen and it would have none of the boxes ticked and it didn't tell me what I was copying from the previous clip. So you'd have to remember what those things were and then tick them manually. And it was just a little bit annoying really. Now in DaVinci 20, if we do the same thing, so hit Control C on the one clip and then paste the attributes on the other clip, it will automatically tick only the boxes of the things that you've done to that original clip. So it's a little tiny update on this feature, but one that makes life way easier and is a huge time saver on a lot of projects. Number five, Magic Mask version two. Now this is again, not a completely new feature, but it's been greatly improved. So in the color page, you can find Magic Mask right here. Now, one thing that has changed from the previous version is that instead of having to draw lines to select objects, you now just need to click to make a selection. And you can do additional clicks to add additional objects or more of a certain object to the mask. There are also subtractive clicks to exclude parts from your mask. Just hold Alt or Option and you'll see a minus appear next to the picker or choose the subtractive picker down here. They've also added a paint tool to manually paint in or out additional regions. And these paint strokes are however not tracked into the image. So each paint stroke only lasts one frame. But it's a great way if you need to clean up small mistakes in the mask. And overall the masking and the tracking just became much much better compared to the previous version, which to be fair, I already thought was really really good. So let's just have a quick look at a few examples. I'm just gonna make a selection of this person with a few clicks. And you can see it did a really nice job on the hair here. So let's track that entire clip. And now let's play it through. So it's doing a really good job on the hair and also when the shoes go behind the grass here, it's tracking that really well. All right, now let's have a look at this guy right here. I'm going to do a few clicks again to select him and the guitar as well. And I'm just gonna make sure to select the better quality option here. That's gonna do an even better job at the hair, then track the entire clip and let's play that through. So again, really, really good and that was super easy. So now I can change the exposure of this guy and I don't know, maybe make him green and then DaVinci will track that throughout the clip perfectly. Next up, animated subtitles. Now, I think this is a big one for anyone who's editing social media content in DaVinci Resolve. In certain apps like CapCut, you already had easy ways to get animated subtitles, and now we also have that in DaVinci Resolve. So let's first automatically generate subtitles for this YouTube Shorts I've got here. To do that, go to the Timeline menu and look for AI Tools, and then here you'll find Create Subtitles from Audio. Once you've generated your subtitles and you've got your subtitle track on your timeline, you can go to the effects panel and look for subtitle templates. Then drag the subtitle preset you like onto the subtitle track header. And now the effect will be applied to all the subtitles on this timeline. So you can get this classic word highlight effect, which is very popular on a lot of short form social content. Number seven, IntelliScript. And I think this is going to be a huge deal for a lot of our workflows, especially if you are creating videos like this one. So we already had the transcription where DaVinci would analyze your talking head or interview footage, and you could basically do a text-based edit of that footage. Remove silences, double takes, and all that. So a huge time saver already. Well, now they've gone even a step further. So check this out. Select the clips you want to work with in the media pool. So these are all of my talking head clips right here. And I'm going to right click and then go to AI tools and then select create new timeline using IntelliScript. It will open your finder or explorer window and you can then select your script as a text file and click open. Now DaVinci will analyze those clips and the script you just selected and then do a complete first cut for you. So how freaking awesome is that? So you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. And whenever there were additional takes or retakes of the same line, DaVinci will stack them in tracks above and have them disabled by default. So now you can go through this first edit and refine a few things here and there or select different takes. And this is just going to be such a massive, massive time saver. One thing to note here though, is that IntelliScript only works with plain text files. So .txt files. It doesn't work with PDFs, Word docs or anything else. 
Next, the keyframe editor. And I think a lot of people are gonna be happy about this one. So previously, if you wanted to do any keyframe editing on the edit page, it would look kind of like this. It was on the timeline within the clip and it was just a bit difficult to see and not really that great to work with. Now in DaVinci Resolve 20, we've got an entirely new keyframe interface. You can find it right here at the top. In this first window, you'll see the keyframes for the currently selected clip. And if you click the three dots here, you can select display parameters with keyframes. And it will only show you the parameters where you actually have keyframes, which is really useful. If you add a keyframeable effect to your clip, so let's say a camera shake effect, and you add a keyframe, you'll see that appear in the keyframe window right here. And there's also a second window in this new keyframe interface. If you click on this button on the top left here, it will take you to the keyframe curves window. Here you can see a graph that will show you how each parameter changes over time. You can change the keyframe timing and value by moving the keyframes up or down or left and right. When you have keyframes selected, you can also change the interpolation by hitting these ease in or ease out buttons on the top, similar to before. There's now also a second way of seeing your keyframes that I really like. So if you look here underneath the viewer window, you can see this keyframe icon. If you click that, DaVinci will open a keyframe window underneath your timeline. And because it's directly under the timeline and it's also synced with the timeline, this makes it really easy and intuitive to edit your keyframes. Number nine, smooth cut. This is another feature which I'm super happy to see in DaVinci Resolve 20. What smooth cut does is it helps you cover up jump cuts in interviews or talking head videos like this one. So here I have an example of a jump cut in one of my talking head videos. If I just play it back, you can see that it's not really that nice. There's this little jump in the video. So let's go over to the effects window, to the video transitions, and then look for smooth cut. Now, if I drag that smooth cut effect over to where that jump cut is, DaVinci will automatically make that transition, well, smooth. Oh, nice, the flares look. They produce this, the flares look. They produce this great look. All right, so I saved the wildest or creepiest new feature for last, and that is AI voice convert. So in DaVinci Resolve 20, it's now possible to convert someone's voice into someone else's voice. This new AI tool basically creates a voice profile from a recording and can then convert that onto another voice recording. So let me show you. So right here, I have a recording of my wife's voice. It's about two and a half minutes long, and I recorded it here in my YouTube studio, so the audio quality is pretty good. Liam lays down and looks at the sky. He sees a bird. And the quality of the voice profile is going to depend on how good your recording is and also how long that recording is. The more and the higher quality the audio data, the better it's going to work. I'll right click that audio clip in the media pool, go to AI tools and select DaVinci AI voice training. Then you'll get this warning about copyrights and usage regulations. So obviously never ever use anyone's voice without their permission. I'm gonna choose a name for this preset and I'm going to select better quality to get the best results. The voice profile will get created in the background so you can continue to use Resolve normally as this is running, which is a good thing because this does take quite a long time. You can always check the status of the conversion down here in the bottom right. Once the voice profile is made, you can then select the clip in your timeline where you want to convert the voice. So here we have a clip of me doing the intro of this video. I'll right click that and select voice convert. Then I'll select the profile I just created, hit convert, and Resolve will do its AI magic. Now let's have a listen. All right, DaVinci Resolve 20 is finally here. No more beta version, the full release is finally available. All right, DaVinci Resolve 20 is finally here. No more beta version, the full release is finally available. Liam lays down and looks at the sky. Now that is pretty crazy, right? Now I don't necessarily believe that this is going to be the most common use case for this tool. Instead, it's great if you, for example, have bad audio on a certain clip, maybe there was a lot of background noise or whatever the case might be, and now you can create a profile of that person with good audio and then clean up that bad audio by simply swapping it out with a much cleaner version. All right, those are 10 awesome new features in DaVinci Resolve 20. Let me know in the comments which one you are most excited about or if there's one that I've missed. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.